Slavery was woven into the fabric of the new United States from the very beginning, but it undergoes a transformation beginning in the 1790s with the rise of cotton. The rise of the slave economy of the 19th century it has to do with the territorial expansion of the United States, both through diplomacy and the expulsion of indigenous communities. It has to do with the transfer of labor to these new plantation areas through the slave trade. It also has to do with the migration of planters and capital to these new regions. So one family that I think illustrates that reality is the Palfrey family. John Palfrey was a Boston merchant, a little bit down on his luck. And just after the Louisiana Purchase, he sees a whole new field for profit in these new lands acquired by the United States. So he moves to New Orleans with four of his sons, and they establish a cotton plantation in a remote frontier region of Louisiana known as Atacapa. So they purchase land. Palfrey also purchases 21 people, men, women, and children, who he transplants to this new land in Atacapa. They turn a piece of wilderness, really, into a cotton plantation. And it's the labor, it's the hands, the arms, the muscle, the know-how, of those enslaved men, women, and children that make that land profitable. Among the Palfrey family papers is a really remarkable document that sheds light on the workings of the cotton plantation. It's a tally of the, um, the weight of cotton that was picked by each enslaved person on the Palfrey plantation for a year, day by day. We know from that record that about 40% of the cotton that was picked was picked by children. Another 40% was picked by women. So the vast majority of the cotton picked on Palfrey's plantation was picked by women and children. But to really understand the, the nature of the cotton economy of the early 19th century, we have to follow that cotton from the Palfrey plantation to, to where it ended up because the plantation on the remote Louisiana frontier was part of a vast southern, national, and even international economy, one of the first global economies of the modern era. So that cotton picked by those women and children would be hauled to New Orleans. In New Orleans, bales of cotton would be uh, put on ocean-going vessels. Those ships would then transport it to New York, or Boston, or even more likely to Liverpool, where that cotton would then supply the raw material that uh, fueled probably the greatest industrial interest of the first half of the 19th century, cotton textile manufacturing. It was cotton textiles that made the, the Industrial Revolution go, and that cotton came from the Deep South. So it would be woven into yarn, the yarn into fabric, the fabric into clothes, and those clothes would then be sold across the world, really. The profits that are made off of the backs of slaves in the Cotton Kingdom, some of it ends up flowing to the hands of cotton brokers in New York, to the insurance companies that are beginning to insure the lives of slaves against death and disease. The profits are going to the hands of the, the shipping companies that are carrying the cotton from New Orleans to New York and to Liverpool. So there are these multiplier effects of slave labor that end up funneling profits into the coffers of, of Northern and European business as well. <laughs> 